Okay, so I heard a massive explosion. I'm not exactly sure what it is right now. I'm gonna go watch the news. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna um, put this on a tripod and go watch the news. Okay. Okay. Now I have it on the tripod. Oh my god. They believe it was an airplane. I'm going to go watch the news now. Okay, come on, come Yeah, she knew, she knew, she knew. Oh my god, you should, oh, I have a, a videotape of it. 
you should just see this thing. Wow. Oh my God. Are they saying, you know, I should get off the phone because Dave might be trying to call me because I left a message. I'll call you back.
Another airplane flew into the second tower, Kelly. I feel like we're under siege. I was watching CNN and there was another airplane and then there was an explosion. Oh my God, now the other one's on fire. I can see both buildings on fire. Because we're under siege. I think, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Okay. An airplane has hit, separate airplanes have hit both World Trade Center towers. Oh my God. Something and I don't know where to go or what to do. I got the patience from my apartment. I can see both of them just burning up.
I think it must be a foreign. I think it must be something bad. Don't you think? So do I. I think it's terrorism. There are so many people in the World Trade Center. I go, do you know how often I go down there? That's where I shop. Exactly. And that second one looked like it was headed straight for it. It was, I mean, it was like, it was targeting it. Everybody's on cell phones. I can't get a hold of my phone.
You know, I may have. I had my. I got a new video camera. And I've had it going ever since. It's definitely terrorism. It's, I mean, what else would it be? Two planes. The second plane, Kelly, you could see it. It turned to hit it. You should hear my neighborhood. I'm looking up. It's so weird because I'm looking down at the street below me. Okay. There's something going on. There are people running down my street. I'm not sure what's happening now, but Hello? What's going 
Who is this? Oh, Mary. We're fine. I, David is long day. He was going to Cleveland. And you know, we can see the whole thing in one house. And I saw this like a plane crash in the snow. This is so bad.
for that, as we said, to be a National Security Council meeting. Back to you. Uh, Major, before you get away, and I apologize with you, if I'm asking you to repeat something, I'm having a little uh, trouble hearing you. Do uh, you know exactly where the President was, when he was told? He was just arriving here in Sarasota at Emma E. Booker Elementary School. He had taken an early morning job this morning in Sarasota, had just arrived here with a presidential motorcade. Then the spectacular, horrific pictures began appearing on television sets here at the elementary school. The president received a telephone call from Condoleezza Rice, National Security Advisor. Then he received an update from his chief of staff, Andrew Carr, traveling with him. Then it was made clear to the press traveling with the president, he would make a statement. Shortly before that statement, he was actually sitting down with some children here at the elementary school, reading them a book. Reporters asked him if he knew about the situation in the Twin Towers. He nodded and said he would talk about it momentarily. In fact, he did. We just heard the president's statement. The clarity is an apparent act of terrorism. Yes? Uh, let me interrupt you here. Senator Ted Kennedy is uh, Senator Kennedy was speaking in Washington again. One of the planes was hijacked from Boston. Uh, the rest of you hear the senator now.
that runs in uh, Washington the too. Capitol to the White House in kind of a straight line going uh, up Washington, D.C., and we have reports of a fire there. Uh, this, what you're looking at now is Washington, at least if I could see the monitor in front of oh, us a little God, we're so under where we are. Yeah. That looks to me like the old executive office building and then back and then you see the large plume of smoke. Here in New York, uh, the sirens everywhere, people out in the streets staring at this uh, grotesque scene of the World yeah. Trade Center buildings. It was in February of 93, if memory serves me correctly, right that there was an attack, a yeah. terrorist yes, attack at the yeah. World Trade Center. I could uh, hear it the day. This, this is when they blew up the, the uh, trade center that day. I was right. No, I heard this. I mean, to be fair, I almost was out of my mind. attacks on the World Trade Center, and then we have these two reports out of Washington, the fire at the Pentagon. Chris Plan is still uh, on the phone, I do believe. Um, and we'll get to get him in a second. Greta Van Susteren is at National Airport in Washington. Greta, what are you hearing? Uh, I just got off work and I said to New York planes were stalled. I'm at National Airport on the parking lot. I heard a huge noise. I looked over in the direction of the Pentagon. There's a huge plume of smoke coming from that area. I can't verify it's the Pentagon because there'll be buildings in the way. You see particles coming down the air. There's a white particle. I can't tell yeah. that that is. I heard a noise right in the Yes, because I, I thought no one was nothing wrong because I left the house uh, like a minute after it. So it happened when I was at the train. Yeah, I was not here. The other one happened at like five after the rush. That's why when we got to uh, 72nd Street, there was no service coming in here. Recap as we pick up small pieces of information along the way. Associated Press is reporting that a plane, it was a plane that crashed at the Pentagon, and the Pentagon is being evacuated. There's a large fire there, and that is the smoke you it's see in the shot that you're looking at yeah, now. Sure Why did that fire is getting the wall itself or outside? Where we have not yet confirmed. Mm -hmm. There is a fire on the mall in Washington. The cause, the cause of the fire on the mall in Washington, we cannot yet tell you. We can tell you that the White House has been evacuated, and we can tell you that two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in New York. All of this began uh, just a little more than an hour ago. I hope Stacey do not. Chris Plant, tell me I wonder what's going on in the school off. with Daniel. I hope she's oh, not I'm sure at the school is canceled. Yes, I'm, I'm sure this thing is I hope she's not at work. I was told by several people that there was, in fact, an explosion. I was told by one uh, witness, uh, an Air Force enlisted, uh, senior enlisted man, that he was outside when it occurred. He said that he saw a helicopter circle the building. He said that it appeared to be a U.S. military helicopter, and that it disappeared behind the building where the helicopter was being loaded. Excuse me. And that he then saw a fireball uh, going to the sky. Uh, I'm attempting to make my way around that side of the building in my car right now uh, to see if I can get uh, a better uh, visual perspective on the scene on that side of the building. But I can tell you that security has certainly clamped down the U.S. Park Police and other federal law enforcement uh, department has arrived in force on the scene. There's a Park Police helicopter overhead. Uh, every car that arrives at the gate uh, where I was located was being stopped by officers at gunpoint. Everyone is being forced out of their vehicles as they arrive at the Pentagon. A very tense situation, obviously, uh, but initial reports from witnesses indicate that uh, there was, in fact, a helicopter circling the building. Uh, contrary to uh, what the AP reported, according to the witnesses I spoke to anyway, uh, and that this helicopter disappeared behind the building and that there was an explosion. Uh, that's about all I have from here. Okay, well, let's do this, Chris. Why don't you continue reporting and we'll pass along a couple of other things that we're picking up along the way. Uh, trading at the New York Stock Exchange. The Stock Exchange, as many of you probably know, and some of you don't, is in that part of Lower Manhattan, not quite far, as far down as the Trade Center, but it's in that part of Lower Manhattan, and trading has been suspended there. Bridges and tunnels coming into New York have been closed. Uh, that will create a whole different set of problems. We are also being told that the FAA has suspended takeoffs and landings 
I want to make sure I get this right, guys, that in all, uh, at all so airports around the country, to get back. Uh, so you call me when you get home? Yes, I will. I'm going out to, to, to see if Stacy left Daniel in school or what's going on, and then I'm going to go home. No, okay. Yes. Give me a call when you get home. I'm sorry you had to come down. Now, instantly, it's like a mad in his last leave I see one chance they say, oh, give me a call. Yes, I will. Say bye, Jerry. Thanks for coming. Oh, so David is coming back. He's trying, he's trying to get home from the airport. Um, all flights are closed down. Yes, yes. All right, so my goodness. Uh, to make a speech on education, has spoken briefly to cameras and is uh, will shortly make his way back to Washington. They are checking out uh, Air Force One now. But let's go uh, to Atlanta. Chad Myers can talk to us a bit about the air traffic problems. Chad, are you there? Air, yes, um, all of the airports across the country have been shut down. We started with Zone New York, which includes Islip, Newark, JFK, LaGuardia, all the way down to Philadelphia, and then IAH, Houston, and then San Francisco, and then LA. They were just falling like a deck of cards, and then all of a sudden the FAH just said, we're shutting down everything. All flights have been canceled, and for another seven hours, which is about five o'clock, Eastern time, and then we'll reignite there. We'll take a look what's going on after that. The probability of extension, as they call that, is high, which means even after 5 o'clock, the airports may still be shut down. We'll be watching it for you here from Atlanta. Um, and if you don't know, just say you don't know. Can you recall a situation where every airport in the country had been shut down? Absolutely not, except in wartime, of course, uh, Aaron, and obviously this is uh, not that. But uh, with all the airports, that, as they were going down from west to east, we could see them, and then we could eventually see from New York, and then they canceled Boston, as we got the report that the first flight, or one of the possible hijack flights, did come out of Boston, and then it just started going down from there. But never, ever before, have we ever seen all of the airports shut down like this, not this quickly. Chad, thank you. Stay on this for a while. We'll get back to you. We know that many people are... Uh, just joining us, we want to get everyone on the same page before we move on. So one more time, let's go through the sequence of events. At about 8.45 Eastern Time, a plane back into uh, the foremost of those towers that are in the world, the world Trade Center. Uh, that's uh, Air Force One you see in Florida, the President on board. Uh, obviously, it's still going to be still going to be on the plane before the President got on. against our nation will not stand. The government will hunt down those responsible. Mr. Bush said today we've had a national tragedy. Two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center in a apparent terrorist attack on the country. And we also have a report now that look, it was a plane that crashed into the Pentagon and we have a large fire at the Pentagon. The Pentagon is being evacuated as we speak now. The White House has been evacuated as well. CNN's John King joins us on the phone. John. Aaron, I'm standing in Lafayette Park directly across from the White House, perhaps about 200 yards from the White House residence itself. The Secret Service has pushed most people all the way back to the other side of the park, trying to avoid having that touch me at the moment. Just moments ago, they started slowly evacuating the White House about 30 minutes ago, and then in the last five minutes, people have come running out of the White House and the old executive office building the building, which is the office building right directly across from the White House. About 10 minutes ago, there was a white jet circling overhead. Now, you generally don't see planes in the area over the White House. That is restricted airspace. No reason to believe that this jet was there for any nefarious purposes, but the Secret Service was very concerned, pointing up at the jet in the sky. It is out of sight now, as we can tell. They evacuated the entire White House staff and the old executive office, as well as the townhouses that are government offices. Many of our viewers might know Blair House, where other international leaders stay in there in Washington. That block of townhouses has been evacuated as well. They are pushing us now back toward 8th Street, which is the next main street to the north from Pennsylvania Avenue across from the White House. John, hang on one second. We're also getting reports at the Capitol. 
the Treasury Building also being evacuated. John, was this evacuation from the White House, was it orderly? Did it seem panicky? How would you characterize it? It started off as orderly, much like you get when there are occasional bomb scares near the White House. But then, again, in the last 10 minutes or so, the people who came out the last several hundred I saw leaving the ground were told and ordered by the Secret Service to run. They were running through the gates. These are, of course, professionals in business suits. I'm also told that prior to that, and we don't know the current situation, that the Vice President and other administration officials on the scene were meeting in the White House Situation Room, which is in the basement of the White House. Whether they had stayed on the complex or not is unknown to us at this moment. I spoke to an administration official shortly after the President delivered his statement. He said, obviously, the operating assumption here is terrorism. The initial assumption this official said was that this had something to do, or at least they were looking into any possible connection with Osama bin Laden, the administration president released a warning that they thought Osama bin Laden might strike out against U.S. Uh, just to add, John, a bit to what you've been saying, we're getting a report from Associated Press now that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service received what AP is describing as a credible, excuse me, a credible threat of a terrorist attack against the White House itself. Um, and I, I expect you'll be checking that out. We'll try and confirm that. That's what AP is reporting right now. Again, this all began about an hour and 15 minutes ago here in Lower Manhattan when the first of two planes crashed in to the first of the two towers behind me at the oh World Trade Center. God. And you can see the smoke billowing out of the, of the front tower now. And then about a half an hour later, just as uh, emergency crews were converging on the scene, as uh, eyewitnesses were gathering on the street corners, a second plane drove into, and you can see that plane coming around the building right now in this tape, and there you can see the hit as it comes through what looked to me at least, and this is the first time I've seen that tape, come through the back side of the tower, I guess that would be the south side of the tower, and, come, and then the smoke and flame coming out the front side. Um, again, that was about a half hour after the first attack, which was at about 8.45. Look, if we, we want to be careful here. We don't want to get too far ahead of this, but obviously this has all the appearances of an extraordinarily well-coordinated and devastating terrorist attack here in the United States. Uh, certainly nothing like it since Oklahoma City or nothing like it here in New York since the terrorist attack on the same World Trade Center buildings in February of 1993. Uh, at the Pentagon, a plane or a helicopter has crashed, apparently as part of whatever this operation has been, and uh, it, uh, Jamie McIntyre is there. Jamie, what are you hearing? Well, the, uh, Aaron, the, uh, there is a lot of confusion there at the Pentagon. It appears that uh, something hit uh, the Pentagon on the outside of the fifth corridor, uh, on the Army corridor. Several Army officers I talked to reported hearing a, a big explosion, seeing shards of metal uh, coming past their window. The Pentagon has been evacuated. Uh, emergency services personnel were rushing to reports of several people trapped in the building. Most of the building's 24,000 people are outside of the building or in the center courtyard. Uh, as an emergency team try to sort out what has happened here. There is, of course, uh, thick black smoke billowing from the scene. Uh, there's a lot of confusion. The Defense Protective Service, which is the police force here in the Pentagon, has been urging people to get out of the building uh, and move away from the scene so they can handle the uh, emergency situation. Again, it appears that an aircraft of some sort did hit the side of the Pentagon. You know, the front, which uh, is a sort of court rock in that facility. Now, just in case you smoke, what is behind it? 
We have the one of our producers on the phone, and I didn't get the name, so why don't, uh, why don't we just go ahead? You there? Yeah, this is Rose Marcy on New York. Rose, tell me what you know. Just a few minutes ago, we saw there's a portion of the building where the first plane struck that seemed to be buckling inside of the home as the possibility was going to fall. Shortly after that, two people, and they hard to tell whether they were being pushed, and they, they physically approached themselves to the sort of river side of the building, would be the west side of the building, and appeared to jump from the top floor, just under where you were seeing the smoke and fire. That is extraordinary. The South Tower, the World Trade Center, has collapsed. Like, again, tell me, how long ago was it that you saw this? This must have been about, about five minutes ago, and prior to that, you could see heads popping out of windows right beneath where that big gaping hole is. So there appeared to be people alive right below where the crash point was. So we're trying to find some way out of there. And just as the thing started to buckle, we saw them plummeting from, from that top floor. Right, and, and this is stated in the office, we apologize for that, but obviously people were uh, already at work here uh, at the Trade Center when this happened. Uh, we don't know how many people uh, have been hurt in all of this. We have no idea at this point as you look at an aerial shot coming from the, I guess that would be coming from the south uh, of the Trade Center or what is it is the Trade Center behind those uh, huge plumes of smoke. All airports across the country, every airport in the United States has been shut down as the FAA and the government tries to figure out exactly what has happened, what is at risk, what is not, who is behind it. Are there more explosions, more attacks yet to come? Uh, here in New York, trading on the New York Stock Exchange has been suspended, at least for now. All bridges and tunnels coming into the city have been shut down as police try and clear, uh, clear the way. We can tell you, as we were coming in uh, perhaps an hour ago, uh, there was a, a convoy, I can't think of a better word, a convoy of fire and police trucks racing down the West Side Highway. This is in the middle of rush hour. Obviously, every uh, available fire unit here in Manhattan has been brought to the Trade Center. Outside the White House, John King, our senior White House correspondent, John. Hello, oh, Adam. They have pushed us even further back away from the White House now, and there are more than a half dozen fire trucks. Some of the Secret Service now patrolling the perimeter of Lafayette Park, which is directly across from the White House, have automatic rifles drawn to keep people away from the park, and they're policing back and forth. You can probably hear additional fire apparatus arriving on the scene. Uh, senior White House staffers who were evacuated, all they could tell us is that they were told that there was a credible threat on the White House as well, and that they were told to evacuate the premises. What we do not know is uh, whether or not the Vice President and the National Security Team have stayed inside the White House Situation Room. We know that they were directing and monitoring operations from there, as of just about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes ago. But the White House staff, the Executive Office Building staff, and all the office buildings around, including the Treasury Department, and some government and some non-government office buildings, people have been evacuated out into the street. And again, the Secret Service now putting up yellow police line tape, and some of them patrolling Lafayette Park with automatic rifles, which is a quite extraordinary here across the White House. Uh, John, um, tell us if you can what the government's national security apparatus uh, will do right now. I mean, what, what do you guess is happening, and where is it happening? Uh, there are more fire apparatus showing up now as we speak. 
We saw most of the senior staff come out. We have not seen the national security staff. We would recommend that anyway, but I should tell there are other cases in the White House. We are on the north side. Uh, in any case, we cannot tell you how many uh, injuries, how many 
fatalities there have been. This is one of those situations that is extraordinarily chaotic. Uh, even, even in the best of planning, I think it's fair to say that it is chaotic and officials are trying to do many things at one time. We have on the phone a pilot who witnessed these uh, planes crashing in to the World Trade Center. Uh, sir, can you tell me your name? John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, John, tell me what you saw. Uh, this morning we were at uh, Midtown Manhattan in a, a 31st floor of a building facing south. We saw a 767 flying low down the center of Manhattan Island heading towards downtown Manhattan at about uh, maybe 20 blocks north of the World Trade Center. We saw the plane veer to the left and fly directly into the north side of the South Tower. Uh, this was the second uh, plane that hit the tower, correct? This was the first plane. Got it. John, this was the 767. Got it. John, hang on. Kate Snow on Capitol Hill. Uh, Kate, what can you tell us about the events there? Well, I'm a couple of blocks away from the Capitol right now. I can tell you that about a half hour ago, the Capitol building itself was evacuated. Uh, it was a little bit chaotic. Everyone was running out of the building. People ran a couple of blocks away. We are now just pushed back by security. We're within two blocks of the Capitol. I did see myself a plane about a half hour ago circling over the Capitol. Now, whether that may have been an Air Force, a U.S. plane, it's unclear. It, uh, that seems to be the reason, according to security guards that I talked with, for the evacuation of the Capitol. They had seen something or heard something suspicious. They've evacuated the Capitol and the surrounding buildings, the office building, at least on the house side, which is where I'm standing. There are three house office buildings. Those have also been evacuated. Uh, we're seeing members of Congress are walking by us here on the sidewalk. Um, hey. I can also, you go ahead. Hey, I'm sorry, and if you said this, I apologize. Uh, and I apologize to viewers too. Uh, was there, to your knowledge, an explosion at the Capitol? No, sir, there was not. Uh, I, I cannot, I can see the Capitol from here. Everything looks to be fine. There was, however, Aaron, a, a sound about five minutes ago that sounded like some sort of an explosion. And everything's in close proximity here in Washington. It could be that that may have been something that happened at the Pentagon, but we're not very clear on that. But we didn't hear a sound. We heard something that sounded like a loud boom about five minutes before. And Kate, you were again, how far away from the Capitol building itself? Uh, I'm standing on Pennsylvania Avenue, which is a main artery in Washington, D.C., and I'm about two blocks away from the Capitol. I did just see a spokesperson, by the way, for uh, the Speaker of the House, Mr. Hazard, Senator Hazard tells me that uh, Mr. Hatcher and other leaders have been evacuated into what he calls a secure location. It's not clear where exactly they are, but they've been somewhere secure. And because we can't see it at this point, just give me a sense of what it looks like there. Are there many, many people on the street? Uh, yeah, the, the, the sidewalks, people are calm. I think most people don't really know what's going on. Most people haven't been watching the news. Uh, but the sidewalks are definitely full of people where, you know, normally at this time, the morning, there wouldn't be that many people out here. And as I say, I've been passed by numerous uh, members of Congress and senators and staff, you know, who I know well, who've been coming past. They asked me to meet what's going on. Okay, why don't you just uh, hang around here and continue to report uh, that. Let me just, again, for those viewers who are joining us at about uh, 20 minutes uh, past 10 o'clock Eastern daylight time, let me just briefly recap the tax on two American cities, New York, and capital in Washington. It began at about 8.45 Eastern time when a plane crashed into the World Trade Center. That building, that was the building hit first. And then about half an hour later, a second plane, and I'm not sure if we have the tape available, but if we do, we'll show it to you. You can see the second plane coming in from the right side of the screen, going into the tower itself. This is an extraordinary and troubling piece of tape. The Justice Department is now being evacuated. The second attack on the train center occurred about half an hour or so after the first one. We have a report, CNN has been told, that an American Airlines 767 jet was hijacked out of Boston today. We don't know which of those two planes uh, hit the tower the second time. In the last 10 minutes or so, the South Tower, or at least a portion of the South Tower, has collapsed. It, uh, CNN's David Ensor joins us from Washington. David, where in the capital are you now? 
Well, Aaron, I'm, uh, I'm in our bureau, but I have on the telephone with me uh, Barbara, who is the wife of a friend of mine and who is an eyewitness to exactly what happened uh, at the Pentagon. Barbara, uh, can you hear me all right? Can yes, you? I can hear you. Well, what exactly did you see? Uh, let's look at the Pentagon now as, as you describe uh, what exactly happened at the Pentagon this morning. As we were driving into town on Spring 95, there was an exit route trying to get off the exit for the Memorial Bridge. Off to the left-hand side was a commercial plane that came in and was coming too fast and too low. And the next thing we saw was we go down the road side of the road and we just saw the fire that came up after that. How large was the explosion? Uh, it was large. Was there a sound as well? Um, we got our camp can't be up, I can windows right in the vehicle. Was it clear to you what happened? Yeah. Uh -huh. So you believe it was a commercial airliner that was uh, hitting the Pentagon? Yes. And I'm not sure exactly where the Pentagon where it was in relationship to where the plane went down. You know, but they are relatively close to one another. Whether it hit any part of that Pentagon, I'm not sure. How low was the plane? When it was coming down? Yeah. It, it, it was coming down on a uh, less than a 45 degree angle and coming down towards the side of the uh, 395. And when it came down, it just missed the 395 and went down below it and then you saw the stuff and we got fire on it. Were you able to see what kind of plane or what, what airline it belonged to? No, I did not see what kind of an airline. I just assumed because it was, we were so close to the airport, it's coming into land. But it seemed off the low to you? Yes. And fast. How big was the fireball? Um, I was facially challenged at times and it was pretty big. What did you think was happening? Um, I know that that hit through the ground and exploded. Were you frightened yourself? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, everybody stopped the car and we all got to step Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Aaron, back to you. David, thank you. CNN's David Insor in Washington. CNN Brian Palmer joins us on the phone from here in Manhattan. Brian, why don't you begin by telling me where you are? We are in front of the criminal courthouse after being pushed north from the. We watched one of the towers of uh, the World Trade Center disappear from the skyline. It basically melted into itself in a pool of great smoke. A crowd of thousands of people dashed up from a home by emergency services personnel. Um, as you know now, we're watching the proof of smoke uh, and the green is sort of washed, uh, washed across uh, lower Manhattan. And people are lining up at the stay home behind me trying to find out uh, where they're going to stay. Let me just briefly go to Randy. Randy, just look out there and tell me what you think when you see what now appears that he's part of one of the landmark buildings in this city one of the most recognizable buildings in the country is gone. It is the kind of moment you hope will never come. Uh, when you have been in government, when you care as much about this city and this country as a mayor like Rudy Giuliani does, it's a moment you pray will never come, and you pray for the families of anyone uh, affected by this tragedy. Uh, but as a city, you know, we come together and our emergency services provide every support they can in the face of such a senseless tragedy. It's a, it is an unbelievable scene as it's you incredible. look down and we stand here at some point every day looking out at the city this time of year. It's extraordinarily pretty and we see those two buildings high above Lower Manhattan and we look out there today and we see this baby hole in one of them. These plumes of smoke that continue to pour from the scene and you, and you know that there's nothing behind, there's nothing power, or these parts that are gone. We join now uh, one of our affiliates, WNYW, and their coverage here in New York. Uh, there was none as we 
we now believe there was no explosion at the Capitol. There Air travel routed to Canada has been international flights going into, into the United States or into Canada, guys, into the United States. International flights headed for the United States are being sent to Canada now to airports there as all air traffic in the United States has come to a halt. The FAA has shut down every airport in the country and to our knowledge, and we're, uh, this is to the best of our memory, that has never happened before. We're starting to get some uh, pictures of the scene uh, from the ground here in Manhattan. Uh, again, this all started about almost an hour and a half ago, I guess, a little more than that. Uh, this is a live picture of the scene now. Uh, we have crews on the ground and they've been trying to get tape back so we can show you the situation on the ground. As you can imagine, literally, uh, thousands of police, fire, rescue officials uh, have converged on the scene. Uh, there are, and we don't know how many, injured to be tended to, to be taken to hospitals. And we continue to check hospitals to find out uh, how many, the extent of injuries. We do not yet know how many fatalities. There is the scene. This is tape now from uh, WABC here in New York. Uh, their crew shot this picture as you see uh, fire trucks and firefighters, rescue personnel at the Trade Center about 30 blocks from where we are right now. And you can see these huge columns of smoke uh, coming off of the front tower and then a bit from the back. As you see, again, the crews working their way towards the, towards the tower themselves. It was 1993. Uh, that I suspect many of these same firefighters converged on these very same towers uh, after the bombing in the in the garage level. Uh, help me with this, but I'm pretty sure it was in the garage when a right, when a rider truck uh, came in and blew up in the garage. I'm not sure it was a rider truck, but a truck came in and uh, blew up in the garage, and that was in 1993. <laughs>